I just want Māori wahine to realise that they can do anything that they put their minds to. As a pilot, because I'm the only Māori woman to ever make it through the Air Force, and that's given me a platform to talk about these sorts of things. But I realise that Māori women have aspirations to do lots of things, and really anything's possible, and I've proven that to myself over and over again. I was 14, and I saw an advert on television for the Air Force and it was advertising various flying jobs in the military. It had the fast jets and the helicopters. And thought, wow, that looks so exciting, so adventurous. That's what I want to do. It was unusual, but it was my dream from that moment onward. Throughout my years, I just worked hard at school to achieve good grades. There was a lot of people that doubted that that's what I could achieve. Even the principal at the time said to me, Angela, don't be silly. In my last year of high school, I put forward my first application for pilot. I had all the grades, got through the interviews and the selection process and was told, well, you've done pretty good. Only 2% of the initial applicants make it to this point. And I was told that I'd missed out through competition. So that was the first crushing blow that I had for trying to get into the Air Force as a pilot. I finished high school then put forward my second application at the age of 18. And I went through the whole process again and got the letter that said, sorry, you've missed out. And then to be honest, for the next few years, I did kind of lose my way. Instead, I went surfing. <laughs> I met some really cool people, which I, I'm still very good friends with, which is all some, something that I you know, say to young people, make sure you enjoy, you know, you enjoy your young years. When I was accepted, finally, on my third attempt, as a pilot in the Air Force. <laughs> so I was 22 when I got accepted. So I trained uh, initially in Ohakia and got my wings awarded in Whanuapai. After I got my wings, I had a period of time where I felt really lonely. As the only Māori woman to ever get my wings, I was, I guess, a rarity for the entire Air Force. Wherever I'd go, people would quietly talk about me. I could see them pointing to me, that's that girl pilot. You always were the odd one out, and sadly, I mean, I had lots of excellent friends, but there's always the odd one that will alienate you. Yeah, thankfully, I got the right support and by talking about it, and that's why I encouraged my peers to do that. Then I stayed in Whenua Pai, flying firstly a smaller aircraft, and then went to the C-130 Hercules, and that job took me all over the world, from Antarctica to Afghanistan, and a lot of what was in between three-year deployment to Canada. At least once a month, we'd get told that the Russians were conducting what they said was a training mission along the border, the Arctic border. And so the Canadians would then respond, send their fighters up with the air-to-air -air refueling C-130 in support to go and meet them along the border. During my time, it was just like a friendly wave. Hello, yeah, we're just, we're here, we're training. <laughs> but. It did introduce me to that type of international politics and, and how that is kind of unravelling today. When I do school talks, the kids always ask, you know, when I was in Afghanistan, were you frightened? No, because you train and you have an amazing team, you trust each other literally with your life and you just know that you have good procedures in place uh, for the threat that you've been briefed about. I wore heavy body armour, I had a loaded pistol at my side, we had procedures for if we did crash and survive in enemy territory, what we would do. What I've learned from all my deployments is that Kiwis are so well received in any military environment we have equipment that's not as sophisticated as theirs, but we do just as good a job as they do, and they, they, they appreciate that. I consider my Māori heritage like my superpower. Um, it gives me the confidence to go out in the world and know that I'm connected to the land and the people in a very special way. My husband and I met, uh, we had rooms next to each other in the officer's mess. <laughs> and the first time I talked to him was because I was painting a picture till two o'clock in the morning. 
and I was using my sink to rinse out some brushes, <laughs> which is quite noisy when you hear it on the other side of the other wall. And in the morning I said, I apologise for the noise. And then, yeah, we went from there. <laughs> and we got married about five years after that. Nico was born in Canada. Yeah, and my um, youngest son, Ty, was born when we were in Whanuapai. They were like four and two years of age when we left the military. And so I was able to be full-time mum. It's fantastic. I love that year. And then we moved here to Rotorua. It must have been about 2010. And then started flying part-time for uh, volcanic air on the float planes. Then I thought I'd better get serious about flying again. 2015 I started with Air New Zealand and that was super because that's when we started building our whare, our house here, at the same time. And then when we moved in I was able to see the aircraft arrived over the house and I realised that it was time to go to work. <laughs> and I love flying around New Zealand. I love Aotearoa, I love the views that we have and I love our people. When I've talked to young children at schools and I've asked them, what do you want to be? I, I find it so sad when they respond, I want to be rich and famous. <laughs> so, oh, okay. <laughs> well, why don't you think about being a pilot? You won't be rich and famous, but... <laughs>